Okay, since we all want to make the cake for Luke's party, I thought we could draw out of a hat to see who gets which task. Awesome, that's a great idea. Ooh, I hope I get to make the cake. It would be covered in sprinkles. Chocolate cake, I would make a chocolate cake. Strawberry icing is a must if I get to make it. All right, on the count of three. One, two, three. <gasps> I got the cake. I got the card. And I'm making the decorations. All right, well, I'm gonna go get started. Strawberry icing and sprinkles. A birthday cake has to have sprinkles. I'm pretty sure that's like in the birthday cake handbook. Oh well, I guess Mike gets to decide. I better get started on Luke's card. And I'll work on the sign. Maybe at least that can have sprinkles on it. We are Connect HQ. Every day we help the people of the world live God's way. We look for the links, make the connection, and you never know what might happen. My name is Harper, and this is the time we created an unexpected surprise. Code red, code red, the bird has flown the coop. I repeat, the bird has flown the coop. What? Luke is on his way here. Oh. Hide the surprises. Why wouldn't you just say that? I don't know. Hey, there you are. Everything okay? Us, we're just stretching. Good to get a good stretching every now and then. Yes. Stretching, yes, yes, make sure to ice afterwards. Uh, uh, but hey, we just got a message from one of our field offices and does anyone have a tablet that we can watch it on? Nope, sorry, off you go now. <laughs> well, maybe we should go to the hub and watch the message? Oh yeah, we'll be right there, buddy. Okay. Whew, that was a close one. No kidding. Hey guys, come here for a second. Yeah? This just came in from Seattle. Let's check it out. Hi Connect HQ, Janet here with the Connect Field Office in Seattle, Washington. I'm here today with Kyle, he... My apologies, <laughs> we got distracted. The sunshine can be a rare occurrence here in Seattle. Uh, Kyle was hoping we could help him with this problem. Hi Connect HQ, sometimes I don't feel like going to church. Can you help me understand why I need to go? I just don't understand why it's so important that I be there. I don't even think anyone would notice if I wasn't in the building. This is a big problem Connect HQ, can you help? Mike, Dot, how about you two go look for a verse link, I'll look for a point link, and Harper, you look for a Bible link. Okay, I can see if the quiet time group will help me. Sounds great. Well, we should look up a verse about going to church. Or maybe why it's important for each person to be there. Hmm, what about this verse? 1 Corinthians 12, 27. Say it like this. 1 Corinthians 12, 27. 1 Corinthians 12, 27. Now you are the body of Christ. Now you are the body of Christ. And each one of you is a part of it. And each one of you is a part of it. Christ is another name for Jesus. So it's saying that we are a part of Jesus' body. Huh. We'll have to figure out what that means. Hmm. The verse link is 1 Corinthians 12, 27. Verse link acquired. I should probably work on Luke's card while I have a chance. But maybe Mike wouldn't mind if I helped a little with the cake. A little bit of cinnamon will make it extra delicious. I'm 
I'm sure Mike won't mind if I improve his cake just a little. Not bad. Sprinkles. There can't be sprinkles on the cake. Maybe there can at least be sprinkles in the cake. <laughs> ah! Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to scare you. I'm Professor Malcolm. From the Research and Data Group? We prefer the RAD group. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dot. Is that the cake for Luke's birthday? It sure is. I was just, um, adding a little something extra. Ooh, you know, this would be an excellent time for me to try my new birthday cake enhancer. Mm -hmm. Chef Elaine never lets me try it on any of her cakes. It takes all the flavors of the cake and makes them even more delicious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. You didn't put any cinnamon in there, did you? Cinnamon is the one ingredient you should never mix with the enhancer. Oh, no. I only added sprinkles. Oh, perfect. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Sarah, for responding so quickly. I'm always happy to help. And you were right. This is a question that requires some deep thinking. The Quiet Time group spent some time in prayer and study, and this is what we found. This is the story about the God who loves us in the Bible. We find truth and purpose to love God and love others. We're searching God's word for things to discover. This book is alive, full of answers and godly advice. This book is alive. See the wonderful story. Through history and poetry How much Jesus loves me God's great story lives There's no other book like this This book is alive The church is the building we go to when we want to learn about God Nope, this is a church Those are people Yep, in fact, it's you and me You kinda lost me The church isn't a building the church is the people who have made Jesus the leader of their lives. And that's us. We don't go to church. We are the church. And we exist for the world. Oh, okay. I still don't get it. Let's look in the book of Acts. That's where the Bible talks about the very first church. The people who first believed in Jesus. They didn't have buildings to meet in, so they met where they could. Usually in people's homes. So their church was a house? Nope, the church met in houses. Even then, the church was the people. And the apostles taught them many things about God. They did great and wonderful things with God's power. God did amazing things through everyone in the church. Through all the people? How? The people of early church put others first. They prayed together, they shared meals, they shared their time, they shared everything. Everything? Really? Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. The Bible tells us that when one of them needed something, others shared what they had. They even sold things and used the money to help out. That's amazing. That's putting others first. The early church was really good at it. For instance, this one guy, Joseph, sold a field and brought the money to the people of the church to help those who needed it. Awesome. What made them do that? They all agreed. They all wanted to live like Jesus, and the apostles told them how Jesus put others first when he died on the cross and went up to heaven. The early church learned about Jesus and lived like him, so they put others first. I think I get it. Great, but you haven't heard the best part. When others saw how those first church people lived, it made them want to follow Jesus too. In fact, more people decided to follow Jesus every single day. Wow. God did do amazing things through the first church people. And God still does amazing things through His people when they live like Jesus and put others first. Right, because we are the church. And we exist for the world. While we do go to church, it is the people showing God's love to the world and not the building that make up the church. Every person is important in their own way. They keep the church healthy and strong by doing the job that God has set for them. Thanks, Sarah. This is going to be really helpful for Kyle. Glad I could help. All right, it's time to add my secret ingredient. And 
cinnamon. <sighs> Good. Thank you for finding the Bible link, Harper. It helped me so much with the point link, and this is what I found. The church is everyone who follows Jesus. Okay, so everyone who follows Jesus is an important piece of the church and what it does. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. The point link is the church is everyone who follows Jesus. Point link acquired. So Luke, random question. Mm -hmm. What's your most favorite thing? Safety. That's great. What rhymes with safety? Oh, hey, uh, Harper. Um, I'm gonna have to leave a little early today, so. Leave early? Well, yeah, just for a little bit. But I, of course, will take care of Kyle first. Oh, um, that's great. I gotta go. Okay. We have to hurry. Luke will be here any minute now. Ah! Oh. Oh, oh, surprise! surprise. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday. Luke! <laughs> Greetings, Luke. I believe it's customary for me to say surprise now. So, surprise! <laughs> Sorry, the decorations aren't finished. You guys, thank you so much! It's amazing! And, um, we made you this card. <laughs> <sighs> A poem to celebrate you. It's your birthday, and we know that you like safety. So we hope that for your birthday, you get a lot of safety. Sorry, it's not really done either. Oh, this, this is just so nice. You guys, thank you so much. I was so surprised. <laughs> well, at least the cake's done. It looks delicious. Happy birthday. Oh. No. oh. Not the first time that's ever happened to me. <laughs> I don't know what happened to the cake. It's almost as if there was cinnamon in there. There was, that's my secret ingredient. I added cinnamon too. I'm sorry, I really wanted to work on the cake, but I shouldn't have done that without asking. Sorry, Mike. I also really wanted to make the cake, so I added sprinkles without asking you, Mike. I'm sorry. I should have focused on my job and let you do yours. <laughs> it's a classic case of four legs, no hands. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Each part of the body works in its own way to keep the body alive and healthy. Every part is important and must work together. Hmm. Just like how the body of Christ works together as the church. 1 Corinthians 12, 27. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. Right, just like in your bodies, where the brain thinks and the heart pumps blood, the body of Christ has people who lead or teach or serve others. Just like our bodies have lungs, stomachs, and blood vessels, God has a specific job for each one of us. Correct. And for the whole body to work well, it needs each part. For instance, if the hands decided they'd rather be legs, we would have four legs competing to do all the walking and running. Sooner or later, that body would trip upon itself. Or imagine a foot that decided it wanted to work alone, detached from the leg. That lonely foot, hanging out by itself, would be unsuccessful and kind of strange. Sorry you try to be legs instead of hands. Your birthday is ruined, Luke. Oh, Dot, that is okay. I mean, birthday celebrations aren't about fancy parties. They're about the people who are there. Just like the church. It's not about the building, but the people who are celebrating Jesus. That's right. The church isn't a building. The church is everyone who follows Jesus. Your watch is making a noise. Oh, oh, oh that's me. I, uh, now I have the perfect recipe for making exploding cakes. Now I'm gonna go start experimenting right now. Oh, <laughs> Professor Malcolm, is that some type of mind reading gadget? Of course not. It's my bike helmet. <laughs> Safety oh. first. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yes. Ooh, uh, Judith. Yeah. Hey, we received a transmission from Connect HQ. <laughs> Let's see what answer they have for your problem. Hi, Kyle. Harper here, coming to you from Connect HQ. We found something that we would like to share with you. It's the reason why we should all go to church. The Bible tells us this in 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 12, 27. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. It's important that you go to church because you are an important part of what the church is and how it works. God made you to be there and do a special job there. Just as the human body has different parts, like a brain and a heart that work in different ways to keep the body alive and healthy, the body of Christ works best when those who follow Jesus work together in the roles God has given them. As it turns out, the church isn't a building. The church is everyone who follows Jesus. Each one of his followers is important to God's work. They show God's love by being an example of Christ's body with how they care for each other and work together. Thanks for your question. And remember, Connect HQ is here to help you. Thanks, Connect HQ. That helps a lot. It's back. Oh, so warm. The body of Christ is everyone who follows Jesus. And each part of the body is important to God's work. If you would like to make the decision to follow Jesus, and become a part of the body of Christ, all you have to remember are the ABCs. A, admit. Admit that you've done wrong and ask God to forgive you for disobeying Him. B, believe. Believe God sent Jesus to take the punishment for your sin. Trust that you're forgiven because Jesus made you right with God. C, choose. Choose to spend your whole life depending on God's power to help you say no to sin. As you live in love like Jesus, tell others God is your leader and number one friend. If you want to make that decision today, be sure and talk about it with your Connect small group leader before you leave.